OpenAI recently released the API of ChatGPT. This is an API that calls GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is the same model used in the ChatGPT product. If you already know how to use the OpenAI API in Python, learning how to use the ChatGPT API should be simple. But there are still some concepts that are exclusive to this API, and we'll learn these concepts in this video. Okay, let's explore all the things we can do with the ChatGPT API in Python. Before we start with this video, I'd like to thank Medium for supporting me as a content creator. Medium is a platform where you can find Python tutorials, data science guides, and more. You can get unlimited access to every guide on Medium for $5 a month using the link in the description. Alright, to start working with the ChatGPT API, we have to go to our OpenAI account and create a new secret key. So first we have to go to this website that I'm going to leave the link on the description and then we have to go to the view API keys option. And here what we have to do is create a new secret key in case you don't you don't have one. So in this case I have one and I'm going to copy the key I have and then we can start working with the API. So now I'm going here to Jupyter Notebooks and we can start working with this API. And the first thing we have to do is install the OpenAI API. So ChatGPT, the API of ChatGPT or the endpoint is inside of this library and we have to install it. So we write pip install OpenAI and then we get, uh, in my case, requirement already satisfied because I already have this library. But in your case, you're going to install this library. And then what we have to do is go to the documentation of ChatGPT API, which I'm going to leave in the description. And we have to copy the, uh, the code snippet that is here. So you can copy from my GitHub that I'm going to leave also in the description, or you can go to the documentation. So this is going to be our starting point. And before you run this code, you have to make sure that here in this variable openai.api underscore key, you type your your secret key that we generated before. So you type here your key and well, you're good to go. And here's something important you need to know is that the main input is the messages parameter. So this one, and this messages parameter must be an array of message objects where each object has a role. You can see here in this case, the role is the user. And also we have the content and this content is basically the content of the message. Okay. There are three roles. There are, uh, besides user, we have also the admin role and also the assistant role. And we're going to see that later. And now I'm going to test this with a simple message here in the content. Here I'm going to leave the role as user as it was by default. And here I'm going to change the content of the message. So I don't want to write hello, but I want to uh, type this. So tell the world about the ChatGPT API in the style of a pirate. So if I run this, we can see that we're going to get something similar that we'll get with ChatGPT. But before running this, I'm going to delete this, um, this quote. And now I'm going to run and we're going to get a message similar to ChatGPT. So here we have a dictionary with two elements, the content and the role. And here I only want the content. This is the text that we're going to get uh, we will get if we were using ChatGPT. And if I write content, I'm going to get only the content, so only the text. So here's the text. Uh, so this is an introduction to the ChatGPT API in the style of a pirate. And well, this is uh, the message or the response. And if we go to the website to ChatGPT, we're going to see that we're going to get something similar. So if I go here and I go to ChatGPT and I write tell the world uh, about the ChatGPT API in the style of a pirate, we can see we get this message in the style of a pirate. So we get this ahoy door and then all the things that a pirate will say. And we get here the same. So we get a similar message. So basically this response is what we will get with ChatGPT, but without all this fancy interface. So we're only getting the text. Okay, now to interact with this API as if we were working with ChatGPT, we can make some modifications to the code. For example, we can use the input function to interact with, with this uh, API in a different way, as if we were working with ChatGPT, like in the website. So here I can use the input and I can, uh, I can write, for example, users. So we are the users and this is what we're going to ask ChatGPT. And this is going to be my content. So here content and instead of writing this, 
I'm going just to write content equal to content and this is going to be the message that is going to change based on the input we insert. Then instead of just printing this message, I'm going to create a variable called chat underscore response and this is going to be my, my response but we're going to put it like in a chat GPT style. So here I'm going to print this and with this we can recognize which is the user uh, request and which is that chat GPT response. So let's try it out. Here I'm going to press uh, control enter to run this. Okay, and here I'm gonna type who was the first man on the moon. So if I press enter, we get here the answer and well, this is like in a chat GPT style. We get an input where we can type any question or request we have and then we get the answer by chat GPT. And now let's see the rows that are going to change the way we interact with chat GPT. Okay, now let's see the system role. The system role helps set the behavior of the system. And this is different from the user role because in the user role, we only give instructions to the system. But here in the system role, we can control how the system behaves. For example, here I add two different behaviors. And to do this, first we have to use the messages object. It is the same messages object we had before. This is the same uh, that we had here. But in this case, this is a uh, for the system role. And here I added two just to show you different ways to use this, uh, this role, but usually you only have only one behavior for the system, or sorry, for the system. And well, here in the first one, I'm saying you're a kind, helpful assistant. And well, in this case, we're telling the system to be as helpful as possible. And in the second one is something I came up with and is something like you're a recruiter who asks tough interview questions. So for example, with this second role, we can interact with uh, ChatGPT as if it was a job interview. So it's something like ChatGPT is going to be the recruiter who asks questions and we're going to be the candidate who answers all the questions. So let's use this, uh, this second content. And now let's include this system role in our code. So to do this, I'm going to copy the code I had before, and I'm going to paste it here. And as you can see, we have two messages variable, one with a system role and the other with that user role. And what I'm going to do is just append one list into the other. So to do this, I'm going to create um, or write messages that append. And then I'm going to put this dictionary inside my variable. So here I write append and now I put this inside. And after doing this, I'm just have to uh, delete this and write messages equal to messages. And with this, we have the system role and also the user role in our code. Now I only have to put this content equal to input at the beginning. And with this, everything is ready. And now we can run this code. So first I'm going to run the messages here, the list I have, and then I'm going to run the code we have before. And here is asking me to insert something. So here I'm going to write just hi. And after this, we're going to see that the behavior of ChatGPT change. So now it's telling us, hello, welcome to the interview. Are you ready to get started? And this happened because we changed the behavior of the assistant. Now the behavior is said to you're a recruiter who asks tough interview questions. And well, here the conversation finished because this, uh, this doesn't have a while loop, but here I'm going to add a while loop. So I'm going to write while true, and then I'm going to run again. So here I'm going to run again and let's see how the conversation goes. So first I write hi, and then this is going to give me the answer that, well, welcome to the interview. And then can you tell me about a work related challenge that you overcame? So here I can say, I had problems in uh, public presentations and I overcame it with practice. So I'm going to write this and let's see how the conversation goes. And now it's asking me to add some specific actions I did to improve my presentation skills. So now you can see that ChatGPT is acting like a recruiter in a job interview. And this is thanks to this behavior we added in the system role. And well, now something that you need to know is that there is another role, which is the assistant role. And this role is very important. And it's important because sometimes here, for example, in this chat, 
that is still uh, on. If we write no, what we're going to see is that is that ChatGPT is not able to remember the conversation we had. So it cannot read the preview responses. So here, for example, I typed no. And what we got is thanks for sharing that. And actually, I didn't share anything. I just wrote no. And well, it's telling me to continue with something else. But as you can see, ChatGPT is not able to remember what we said before. And if we add an assistant role, with this, we can make sure that we build a conversation history where ChatGPT is able to remember the previous responses. So now let's do this. Let's create an assistant role. OK, as I mentioned before, the system role is used to store prior responses. So by storing prior responses, we can build a conversation history that will come in handy when user instructions refer to prior messages. So here, to create this assistant role, we have to create again this dictionary. And then in the role, we have to type assistant, as you can see here. And then in the content, we have to introduce the chat response. And to understand this much better, I'm going to copy the previous code and I'm going to paste it here. So here, the chat response is this one. This chat response that has the content of the response given by chat GPT. So here I'm going to copy this code and I'm going to paste it here. And what I'm going to do here to include this assistant role is to append this into the messages list. So here I'm going to write messages that append and then the parentheses. And with this, we integrated the assistant role to our little script. And here for you to see the big picture of all of this, I'm going to copy also that system rule. And well, it's here, the system rule, I'm going to delete this first line of code. And well, this is the big picture. So we have the system rule, this sets the behavior of the assistant, then we have the user, which sets the instructions. And finally, we have the assistant who stores all the responses. And with this, we can have a proper conversation with ChatGPT. Here, before I run this code, I'm going to customize a little bit more the behavior of the assistant in the system role. And here, I'm going to type this. So it's basically the same, but here I'm adding, you ask one question or one new question after my response. So so to simulate a job interview and well now that this is ready here i'm going to make sure that everything is right and well everything is perfect now so here i'm going to run these two blocks and then i'm going to type hi so we can start with the interview so are you ready for the interview yes so here it's going to ask me a question let's get started can you tell me about your previous work experience and well i worked at Google, I'm going to say. And well, now it tells me that's great. Can you tell me your role and responsibilities? And I can say, I was a software engineer. And well, now the conversation is going to keep going and ChatGPT is going to ask me more and more questions. And in this case, it remembers the previous responses I gave. So for example, I said I worked at Google and here it's telling me the responsibilities I had at Google. And in the next response is also mentioning Google again. And I think if I mention the project that is asking here, for example, if I write, uh, I had a credit card detection project and I overcame it with teamwork I don't know something like this then it's going to ask me about this project so now it mentions teamwork which I said in my in my previous response and now is asking me more about this project. So with this, we can see that our assistant is storing our previous responses. And with this, we're building a conversation history that keeps the conversation going without losing quality in the responses. And that's pretty much it. Those are the three modes that you have to know to work with the ChatGPT API. And in case you wonder about the pricing of the ChatGPT API, well, it's priced at 0 0.002 per 1000 tokens, which is 10 times cheaper than the other uh, models like GPT 3.5. And well, it is another reason why I wouldn't pay $20 for a ChatGPT Plus subscription. And well, in case you're interested why I am going to cancel my ChatGPT Plus subscription, you can watch this video where I explain why I regret paying $20 for a ChatGPT Plus subscription. And well, that's it. 
I'll see you on the next video.